Uh, remember, it's a pleasure to meet you because I do the comic stuff too. And not only do you pick the voices for the cartoons and the movies, but the fans still hear these when they read the comics. So thank you. That's nice. Thank you. Um, so do you always oh, yeah. think as a casting director, like when you watch a live action movie or just meet people in everyday life, you go, that guy, if he was in the full family, would be a good dark side. All the time. All the time. I, I, from watching TV, just, I gotta keep, I, I have to keep a notepad on television so I can write down somebody's name. Uh, as a matter of fact, not long ago, as in the next piece that's coming up, which we can't talk about, um, I saw an actor on an episode of Castle, and of course I've worked with Nathan Fillion many times in, as Green Lantern, and I saw this actor and heard this voice and called up Nathan and said, how is this guy to work with? He's a good guy, he's a good actor, he's a pleasant to be with, and he said, he's not And so I hired him. They had never done voiceover before for animation, and he was just great in this next piece, so uh, I always thought it was a different voice. And, and it happens, I listen to people in the crowd, and just go, wow, that's an interesting voice. Now, if they can't act, it doesn't do any good. It's just an interesting voice. But there's always that hope that I find something that hasn't been done before. It's using an actor in a way that they've never been used before. Using someone like Bill Macy, who, do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, William Macy. Yeah, William Macy. Yep. Um, using him as like a believable villain. Nobody ever casts him that way. He's yeah. the milk toast nice guy. <laughs> so I like doing that kind of contradictory casting, which is uh -huh. nice. What's the farthest you've gone to cast someone where you're like, I have to have this person do that? Voice? I'm not done yet. I not keep going yet. on and on and on. How many are still on that list? A know. lot. <laughs> a lot. Because cause more and more actors suddenly are showing up. There's so much TV and not enough time. Uh -huh. And when I get all the Emmy um, screeners, and I watch as many of them as I can, I need a lot of them. I'll see an actor or, that, or a show that they've done, you know, 26 episodes and never even heard of the show. I'll try to watch at least three or four episodes and get a sense of it. Hear their voices, hear their acting ability, and keep them on that list. Of, oh, don't forget that. If you need a good thumb, if you need a good so -so, you need a good female heroine, if you need. And sure enough, something recently that I was watching, I was like, I'm an actress, I'm great for that. So I'm casting something right now. It's just doing that very thing, watching these screeners. So many new actors coming up. That's been too. Young actors, their voices change. Kid actors. You know, you could cast someone as, say, a young Robin, for example. If you cast him at like 12 years old, three years later, it doesn't sound the same at all. So you can cast him again as a much older character because the voice goes from having this kind of squeak as young boys do to a man. So there's always lots of, so much talent. From it was a pleasure to speak for me as well. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, kind of cut off guard here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, shortening it, shortening it to two films. Were there? Uh, was it, how hard was it to decide what got cut, and if there's anything major really? Oh, uh, I mean, I think Bob Goodman did a great job adapting the original graphic novel to the screenplay. Uh -huh. So when I got the screenplay, uh, there was a lot of things of the series that he had already made that, that I was like, okay, this is cool. But there's some things that I thought when I looked at the graphic novel that I'm like, oh, I think he left out here, and I think we kind of need this back into the film. So what I try to do is try to like, you know, I, you know as a filmmaker, I want to always think about it as in terms of the audience. If the audience never read this, if we show one image after another, uh, they might associate it differently. So I got to make sure that I have have all those bits and pieces that still stays true to the source material, but at the same time helps the, the experience of the audience member, even if it's the first time to kind of uh, understand what the Frank Miller kind of story is about. Yeah. And The Dark Knight Returned is like the granddaddy of Batman stories. You know, I do Batman news, so I, yeah. I know. And so now that you've got the pinnacle of Batman stories, like, well, are there any other Batman stories that you're hungry to do, or you want to branch out into other stuff? No, I mean, this is my first one that I've done, at least for... Uh, Animated. I mean, I did, I did a little bit of uh, Under the Red Hood, you know, so that was a fun one. Mm -hmm. But I think Batman's great because he lends himself to like all these great storylines, whether it's an adaptation from an existing comic book to something that's even original. And one of the things I'd love to do is maybe do an Arkham Asylum uh, adaptation. Yeah. I'd love to do that. I'd love to just do one which is a fight fest. Uh -huh. uh, or I've, I've heard that uh, the whole, what was it, Court of the Owls that's going on right now, yeah. I heard that's a really great storyline. I haven't read it myself, uh -huh. but people at the studio have told me, like, this is awesome. If you ever get a chance to adapt it, maybe we'll try to do that. Yeah, and, so. like, there's been a lot of discussion on the site that I have about like uh, No Man's Land and yeah, Nightfall yeah. would be big but those are, again would be big ones that you'd have to break up and yeah I mean the thing is, is that I think something that's within like maybe a four issue limited series or five would be easier to adapt than something that's maybe 12 or more because you know as you saw in Superman Doomsday it's hard to adapt when there's like 30 issues across or yeah. long and, and I think something that more lends itself to that that can be done within an hour and a half to two hour format is the best kind of stories uh -huh. cool. Cool. Thank nice, you. nice meeting you
I know you got to get it. You need a rum with that. Batman news. Batman news. Okay. Hey. Batman news. What do you want to know? I guess it's because I touched RoboCop, Buckaroo Banzai, and Batman news that I was willing to do something. That's right. Yeah, I had some Philip K. Dick in there, man. Yeah. I was going to ask you, since you've been Batman now and you've done this, are you hungry to do even more Batman? Like, would you want to voice some other things? Or do you just want to stay on? I really like working with Andre and doing the voice. I was thinking of this thing I was saying, the milieu of it being uh, out of, coming out of retirement and being you know, a middle-aged stud as opposed to a 32-year-old stud or something like that, and subsequently having to look at his life about what it means and where he's been and what he's going to do. Did you just give away my age? I can look at Pete in that. Uh, and, so, uh, yeah, I would do I, I definitely do other things. Um, a lot of the payoff of working is A, the script, of course, and B, the money. But C, probably more importantly, the people you're working with. So, this is what it did. Bruce, Andrea, and Frank Miller wrote the book, which was taken. Uh, uh, fantastic. So, yeah, I would do that. We also have a son now, so. You have a son. I would do it for him. <laughs> Since you played, uh, you've got a good list of iconic characters on you now. Like, is there any other really famous character that you'd want to take on and make your own? Well, your buddy here just suggested Machiavelli, so, you know, what the hell? I'd like to play him once. Yeah, that's something. If you wanted to go the history route, I know you're really a big history buff yourself. You got your doctorate yet? I'm, I'm going to... I'm ABD, all the dissertation, PhD candidate. I'm in order to file my dissertation in May. About 400 pages into it, I see no end in sight, so I just have to, have to at, the end, at the end of the day, just write the end and turn it in. Well, as a history major myself and a Batman you? fan, it's an honor to talk to you. Where, where, where are you a history major? Where I went to uh, Mizzou. You did? Uh-huh. You went to Mizzou, no kidding. Yeah, I'm, I flew here from St. Louis, actually. They did? Yeah. Wow. My mother's from St. Joe. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. not that far from there, actually. That's right. Well, are you from the north? Yeah, I'm uh, south St. Louis area. Okay. High Ridge is a crazy town. Yeah. So it was a, quite the hikes you've Miles here. Davis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Miles Davis is one of your homeboys, man. Yeah. A genius, if I may say. Well, anyway, good talking to you. Yeah, thank you. The scene you were looking forward to doing the most? Uh, there are two scenes, and you'll see them in the thing, because they, they both made it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you never know. One is when Bruce and... Gordon are having a talk, a drink, about life, yeah. old times. And the other time is when Gordon has, uh, he's got to pack it in this time, and he's sitting back there, he's talking uh, about, uh, he gives a parody about when Roosevelt came into office, you know, or was in office and talking about World War II how it started, being old fossils, being an old fossil like himself. I like those moments. And, you know, so those, those, they're still there. They're still there. I would have liked to have done all the inner law dialogue. Yeah, I was wondering if there would be a like, voiceover. We don't do it. And because uh, they, they made the decision that it was, they didn't want to slow things down. They wanted it moving, and it, it's a moving picture. So they, you know. And there was so much of that, so they decided, you know, <laughs> creative decision was made. Thank you. From Batman News. Andrew, nice to meet you. Yeah, so when you got the job, what was the first thing that came to mind? Like, what was the first scene that you thought, I can't wait to tackle that? Well, the first thing that came, well, I'll tell you the story, and then we'll get All to right. it. Um, so, I, um, um, I had been working with Alan Burnett. Used to these guys for I think since like 1995 uh, when I started as Alan Paul's assistant. That was my, my first job in Hollywood. Um, and working away from assistant to writing on the Batman animated series and Superman and Batman Beyond, all those shows. Uh, I wrote the Legend of the Dark Knight episode years ago that had the, the piece of the And it's really been the dream project all these years. Like, you know, I've, I've told people, I've told Alan, you guys are ever going to adapt Dark Knight, I'm the guy to call, I really want to do it. Um, and then Alan called me. Um, I had already written one or two of the direct-to-video movies that are still in the pipeline. They don't produce them in the same order that we always write them. Um, 
so uh, Alan called me, checking my schedule, checking my availability, if I was interested in doing another movie, and I swear to you, he teased me. He went, uh, oh, you know, we're thinking about maybe doing a Green Lantern movie next, and then there's some other thing, you mentioned another one, and uh, oh, maybe Dark Knight Returns, and then oh, this other one that we might do. No, stop. <laughs> You're effing with me. Uh, you know, obviously, Dark Knight Returns is the one that I want to do, and uh, don't worry about my schedule, I'll move mountains to, to make it happen. Um, and so, you know, the, the first thing that came to mind was, awesome, I'm going to get to write Dark Knight Returns. Um, was there a particular scene that was like the first one that came to mind? I really don't know. It's, you know did you write it, it in a linear fashion, or did you start from a scene in like part two? Dude, or? you just blew your second question. <laughs> um, I didn't know I had to. <laughs> you only get two. <laughs> Um, maybe we'll give you a mini question at the end just to like wrap it up. Um, but, uh, but you were helping me. There's like one B. Um, the way that I, that I approached it was first I, you know, reread the material again uh, from scratch with fresh eyes, um, took, you know, copious notes, um, started thinking about, you know, how am I going to structure this as two movies. It happens that um, from early on, from before I got onto the project, um, Alan told me the decision had been made to do this as two movies. Um, so I knew that going in. And kind of my first job after our first, like we had a lunch to talk about it, my first job was, okay, pitch how I'm going to structure this, what my approach to the material is going to be. And so my very first job on the scene was think about how am I going to structure this as two separate movies, what am I going to put in part one, what am I going to put in part two, um, uh, what are the sort of, like, key arcs, because there, there, there are so many layers of things going on, there's a lot to choose from in the material. Um, and so, for instance, in part one, really for me, the, the primary spine of the movie is Bruce Wayne's um, moving from a, a man who's kind of lost his purpose, uh, who's drinking himself to death, who's looking to you know commit suicide, um, to finding his relevance, finding his strength, finding his purpose in the world again, and being strong and you know and back on the scene at the end of the movie. That's kind of the main arc for me for part one. So decisions like that, how I'm structuring it, um, and for me, and this was a big pitch, kind of a contention with DC that I had to argue to like get them to trust me to try this was to remove all the inner monologue, to remove all that voiceover, and say, you know, give me my chance at dramatizing these scenes externally, to doing it in dialogue and, um, and, and action and characterization, uh, and that I promised them, uh, and I hope the audience agrees that, that I, you know, mostly succeeded, uh, that I didn't lose them. You know, maybe there's a beloved line here or there that people don't hear anymore, because obviously in an adaptation, I have to write from scratch, and it wasn't, it wasn't, they didn't need me, they didn't need to hire a writer if I was going to transcribe every word verbatim from Frank's book. I, I, you know, I studied the books and then kind of put them aside, but what I tried to do was honor the ideas, honor the themes, honor the intentions. Um, Frank never left far from my mind. I, I, my job was to get into his head and write the movie this should be if you take this material and make a movie out of it. So I hope people like the result. Yeah. Go ahead, give me a one, give me a uh, mini two. <laughs> All right. When you were watching The Dark Knight Rises, were you like shaking your fist going, we still do that a lot better uh, No. Dark Knight Returns? Heavens no. <laughs> no, listen, you know, ev this, this book redefined Batman. It, you know, it largely redefined comic books. Um, you're, you're too young, but I was the right age when, when this came out in 1986. And it's like, it was earth shattering. Um, and it's not surprising that everything Batman since, every, you know, pretty much every movie, there are a couple of those movies that went astray, but in general, the movies, the, you know, what's happened in the books, it's all still in the wake of what was done here. Mm -hmm. So, no, the fact that, that Christopher Nolan agrees that, like, this is the font from which to draw, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't fault him that one bit. <laughs> uh, and I, and I, I love those movies, I think they're great. All right, thank Thanks you. a lot. I'm uh, Andrew Asbury from Batman News, nice to and uh, don't really have any questions, just wanted to say thanks on behalf of the Batman community, because you could have walked away like 10, 15 years ago, and your impact on Batman <laughs> would still have us singing your praises in our halls. Oh. So, just really can't thank you enough, because you've made so many fans. Everybody still talks about Batman the Animated Series, the voices in these movies and the TV shows, and the voices we hear when we read the comics. So, thank Very you. Cool. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Hey, I'm Dan Casey with...